Hi guys, it's Friday. We literally just walked in the door from shopping in Traverse City, finishing up some last minute Christmas shopping. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow is our Christmas party with my family, my our extended family, and Annalyn comes home mm -hmm. tomorrow from the, uh, so we pick her up from the airport. Hey Danielle. So yeah, that is why we are once again four minutes late in starting. But mm. thank you guys for joining us. Hi, Amity. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah, as soon as you pop on, give us a thumbs up or an, your favorite emoji in the comments. Give us some hearts. Tap that little heart thing. Tap, tap, tap. Let us know that you're there. <laughs> so we can see ya. We only see two people, but it, the little eye thing at the top says there's four. So if we don't say hello to you, it's because the computer is lagging behind. But um, so anyways, we're just going to breathe a second. <laughs> <laughs> and this week, okay, we said we're going through the progression of getting to your promise. The first week was pray and picture your promise. Picture it. And um, then we talked about persevere for your promise. So when you come up against an obstacle, you don't just stop and give up. You remove the obstacle out of the way, like something that's in your soul or in your heart that's blocking you or capping off the promises of God or the, the Holy Spirit moving in your life. And then this week, we're going to talk about actually obtaining your promise or possess your promise. We needed another uh, P word to go with the other one. So we said possess, so possess your promise, which is kind of a really good action word, I think. Mm -hmm. um, in So basically, a couple weeks ago, yeah, a couple weeks ago, we were just talking about um, how important it is to pray and get a picture and then um, of what you... What God is showing you about um, your future, about a relationship, um, family, uh, whatever it is, um, it, he, he loves to give us a picture of what he wants us to see for the future. That's so important right. because once you get a picture, it gives you hope and then it gives you something to focus on, it gives mm -hmm. you something to move for, it gives you a goal really. Um, so, that, so I, I think many people don't really take advantage of the picture that God wants to give them. Um, God's all about pictures. In the very beginning, he framed the world. That's a picture frame almost. He, mm. he framed the world with his words. Um, and so pictures are extremely important to God. Um, vision, we said without vision, without a picture, people cast off restraint. Without a picture, they lose hope. They really don't. Mm. They don't really uh, have anything to shoot for. They're really just a living day after day, really out of a perpetual past. So once you have a picture of something, then you can move forward with it. So we're yes. hoping you got a picture. Um, if you don't, you can still pray about it and then and then ask God to show you what he sees for that situation, for that relationship, marriage. It could be, like we said before, maybe if, you're, if you have kids and your kids are kind of gone away from the Lord, we'll get a picture of what yeah. God sees for your child right. and then start moving towards that. You'll start praying and even start doing things differently um, that you wouldn't do. Well, mm -hmm. well, let's put it this way. If you had a negative picture, if all you saw uh, was what you're seeing in the natural, right. your child not, not um, never doing anything, never coming to know never the, Lord. Come to the Lord, well, that's going to be hopeless. But right. if you get his picture, then you can start moving that direction. You'll start doing things Let's say too. you need healing or somebody in your life needs healing. Get a picture from God in your mind of yourself healed. Like, use Kelly it's okay that you don't get something like a big lightning bolt experience from the Lord that's mm -hmm. okay you the picture that you see in your mind is using your imagination to see what you know God wants for you so you see yourself healed or see your loved one healed or see uh, picture your um, children and your family members uh, worshiping Jesus picture yourself uh, being able to pay all your bills every single week, you know, and um, with there being plenty of provision and plenty left over to give to every good work. Picture uh, 
what else? Um, say there's somebody wants to start a business. Picture yourself owning your own business, something yeah. that you really love to do. Um, so, yeah. All of those things. So these are just examples. Uh, but yes, Kelly, picture your loved one healed. Yes. So that's important because, and, and here, this is really important too. Like if you don't know, you don't have a picture, you like have a hard time imagining or getting a picture of something. Um, I thought this was really significant um, in John. Uh, matter of fact, I think all of Jesus' first words are very significant. So if you look in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and look at the first red letters that you see, mm -hmm. you're going to, and then read them in the context, but just look at what Jesus, Jesus, uh, the red letters say. Well, in John, his very first words are, what do you want? Mm -hmm. What do you want? I think it's so significant that you, you hear this because you have to think about what, yes. what you want. Like, and I, I believe mm -hmm. every time that God says, what do you want? It's always tied to a person because we love people. We want mm -hmm. the best for them. So usually it's not a selfish thing. Mm -hmm. And if it is, we just check our motives. But usually when but God even says... even if it's for you, well, yeah, it's still it, Absolutely. You good. want personal healing. It's a, mm -hmm. You're a person. He loves you. Mm -hmm. Personal healing, freedom. Yeah. You need some provision. So really, it's so significant that Jesus says, looked around and said, what do you want? Mm -hmm. What do you want? Yes. And then he says in John, the, the, the second uh, thing he says is come and see. So it's almost saying, what do you want? And let me show you what I'm going to do mm -hmm. after you ask... Right. That thing from God. Whatever right. you ask, like he wants you to ask, right? Ask and you shall mm -hmm. find. It, he's, he's kind of putting the ball in our court. And that's really what we're going to talk about today is God yes. put the ball in our court. Yes. We, we have now the decision to make what we're going to do to possess the thing that right. God, what we know God has for us in our lives. Yeah. So if you need provision, maybe you need a job, you know, maybe you need God to come through in the area of that uh, provision. So but it's gonna take action on your part. And that's what Possess Your Promise is all about. So Hebrews 6, 13 says, um, or sorry, 15, God had made a promise to Abraham about his, uh, his seed being uh, more than, he would multiply his descendants beyond number and more than the stars in the sky. Um, and Abraham didn't have any children at the time. So Abraham was picturing what that could be like, and he knew it was a miracle. So verse 15 says, Abraham waited patiently, and he received, or another uh, version says, he obtained what God had promised. Or possessed. Mm -hmm. Or possessed what God had promised. So all of those words are action words that are, uh, receive actually means to take, to take for yourself. So Abraham waited patiently, and he took to, mm -hmm. for himself what God had promised. And then Hebrews um, 10, 36 says, Patient endurance is what you need so that you'll continue to do God's will. That's an action. Do God's will. And then you will receive or take for yourself right. all that he has promised. Right. Because receive means take. So think yes. about it in football terms. A receiver... Take. The ball's coming, they take it, they yes. take it in. They would mm -hmm. be a good receiver unless they took it in. So right. when he says receive, believe that you have received, received. it. Believe that you have taken it in. Take it That's for really what he's saying. Yes. So right on. So so there's mm -hmm. something, there's an action that has to happen in, in possessing mm -hmm. the, the promise. Let me just say this. Um, God doesn't live in maybe land. Mm -hmm. God doesn't live in maybe land. So in other words, he says, like if you're going to make a vow... Or if you're going to say you're going to do something, either say yes or no. Someone says, hey, uh, can, I, mm -hmm. can, can we go out next week? And you say yes, yes. or no. Y you, God doesn't, he says, anything else is, is not good. He said, just say yes or no. Right. And so what he's saying is in, on, in, on earth, on earth, mm -hmm. we say, we say uh, yes or no. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, either I can or I can't. In other words, don't say maybe. Mm -hmm. Do not say maybe because God doesn't live in maybe land, I, mm -hmm. I would say. But listen, mm -hmm. the, prom the kingdom of God is yes. Now think about this. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of God, all the promises of God are yes, yes. and amen. They're not yeah. yes and no. Now they're yes and um, he, well, he might say not now. Wait. Wait. Yeah. He, uh, he wait. But mm -hmm. all the promises of God are yes. So the mm -hmm. kingdom of God is yes. So, right. so that helps us to understand that when we, we're putting action to something, if there's a promise, the vision that God's giving you a promise, that you, you know that it's God's... It's going to surely come yes, to Yes, he already said yes. Mm -hmm. Now the yes. persistence and now the, 
the, what do you want mm-hmm. me to do, God? Like, what right. can I do right. now? What's my next step to take yes. to possess that thing? Mm-hmm. Because that's, uh, that's really faith in action. So faith without works is dead. If you don't do anything, if you say, I believe the promise that God promised me, I believe that I'm going to be healed, but then you do nothing about it, then your faith really doesn't mean anything until you take action. And the action also has to be, I think, spirit-led. You know, you have to pray about it and go, okay, God, what action do you want me to take? You can't just do whatever, you know. And, and you know, there are some things that are, pre- like, common sense. If you're going to write a book, you got to start writing. Yeah, <laughs> if I, that's your promise, you got to start writing something. And, and I'll say this, is that, listen, if you just want to help someone... Yeah, if you can't everything go wrong. you do, I'll, I'll say this: every good thing you do mm-hmm. is God's will, yes. <laughs> because He's prepared for you ahead of time good works. Right. Every good thing you do, if you're going to be do mm-hmm. something good, mm-hmm. it's 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 just it is, it is God loves it's it. It's God's will. God loves it. Yeah. You just say you say yes to good things. Now mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm not, I'm not saying that some people say yes to everything, I'm not, but I'm saying yes when you know, hey, this is a good thing. Mm-hmm. I can do this. I can help someone. I can. I can give. I can yeah. do something anonymously. Mm-hmm. Anonymously, but uh, just yeah, good. Good is really good, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Be so there's good. a parable that Jesus gives about getting a harvest or really getting your promise from mm-hmm. God. And he said the farmer goes and he plants the seed. So that's action, right? Planting the seed for the prom, and that's what we would say probably the first week is pray and mm-hmm. picture your promise. Yeah. So he doesn't see the promise yet. He doesn't see the harvest yet. It's under the ground. He just planted it into the ground by praying and by picturing what it's going to look like. I'm picturing a huge crop of corn, you know? Uh, And then Jesus said, day and night, he wakes and sleeps and he doesn't know how, but the harvest starts to grow. Mm -hmm. Little by little, it starts to grow. But he doesn't doesn't harvest it right away when he sees it because it's just baby, you know, at first. And it keeps Mm -hmm. growing over time. And he waits and he watches and he waters it. And then... Uh, the second step of action you take is when you see that the harvest is ripe, then you put in the sickle and you reap it. So you do have to take action to receive your promise and do something about it. So, action so let's faith. do a practical thing right here. Yes. Okay, let's say you want to write a book. Yeah. All right? And you just don't know what to do. Yeah. Nothing's going to happen. Right. But when you start writing some things down, just, just pray Mm-hmm. Start writing some things down. Yes. And start writing. Mm-hmm. All right? And, Just one and that, page. you're on your way. Mm-hmm. And I guarantee you, when you start writing is when you'll feel good about your feeling. Oh, I feel good. Yeah. But usually, remember, God doesn't God doesn't live in maybe land. He doesn't mm-hmm. He doesn't live in the gray area of our lives. He say yeah, he, he wouldn't tell us to say yes or no if that's right. not how he worked. He's very decisive. Mm-hmm. So he'll say, but he says yes. Right. So I want to say when he, when you when you want to write, write a book to help people, mm-hmm. why wouldn't God say yes to that? So just just go start writing some things down, jot them down, yeah. and you're on your way to possessing that that yes. promise. Or how about you need your healing? Hey Elizabeth, you need your healing. Uh, the woman with the issue of blood is a good example of praying and picturing, believing and persevering, yeah, <laughs> and then possessing her right. promise. Right. So she's a great picture of this whole thing that we've been walking you guys through. She heard about Jesus Mm -hmm. and she said, I can see myself healed. If I only, she said to herself, Mm -hmm. you know, if I only could get to him and touch the hem of his garment, I know that I will be healed. She could see herself healed. If she could see herself touching the hem of his garment, she could see herself healed. And then she had to take action. She had to actually push through the crowd to get there to Jesus. And she had to actually take hold of his hem. Right. And then when she did, she received or possessed or obtained her promise. And so that is true for you guys too. Now, you can see yourself healed, take some action yes. to get there. And I'll tell you right now, is one of the biggest things that stops people is fear. And so just think about this. Let's say that you have a beef against someone. Mm-hmm. Let's say that you, you've been offended by someone. Someone yeah. you love, you wish, you wish you could have that relationship, and nothing's happening. You're stuck in maybe mm-hmm. land. Like, I'm not going to do anything about it. And that's what happens when we don't mm. do anything about it, then nothing happens. But maybe what mm. you can do is this. You can just begin to forgive. And you can do something like, I'm just going to write a note. I'm going to send a card. I'm going to 
make a phone call. Now, you may be fearful in the moment because you don't know how that person's gonna react, but I guarantee you, once you actually just put one step in motion to that, you will feel mm -hmm. better because you've been obedient and you've stepped into yes, yes land. Mm -hmm. You know that God's called us to forgive. Mm -hmm. You know that God's called us to, to do those things, but but you, you've, maybe you've been stuck not doing anything, but now you're gonna do something about it. So I take a step and I'm actually gonna do something put action to it right. and that's when you begin to possess that thing and you'd be surprised that all of a sudden you call them up and you're like hey I want to bury the hatchet I, I'm, I'm sorry that we felt this way and next thing you know everything's great yeah. and you wish I wish I would have done that like five months ago right. and not felt this way the whole time <laughs> yes so um <laughs> <laughs> I was do you need to forgive that. me no <laughs> well maybe right. do okay. I I don't know I don't know <laughs> Tell about me. Later. Um, yes, but I was just reading my notes too to say, like, if you start to see a first fruits of your promise, let's say you start to see the beginning of your healing, but you don't have the whole thing yet, just know that that's not the end of the promise yet. That's not the end of your answer. Just know that more is coming. It's just a first fruits. If you see uh, someone that you want restoration with, a relationship that you want restoration with, and you see them just beginning to talk to you again, or reaching out to you again, or answering you when you reach out to them, whatever that might be, right. then that's a first fruits. Mm -hmm. So don't give up. Keep believing for the whole promise to happen. Um, let's say you're believing for a loved one to come to know the Lord and they finally uh, say they're going to go to church, but they don't give their heart to the Lord right away. Well, at least they're coming to church. You know, right. that's the first fruits of your yeah. promise. You can go, thank you, yes. Jesus. The rest is coming. So I know for sure my entire promise is going to come to pass. So don't give up. Action, acting on what you are believing proves that you believe God's promise. It proves that you believe it. Yeah. Um, like we have this little example of a, a little girl in our church. She lost a smiling face balloon and she really loved it. She opened the door and it, and it just flew away. And she was just crying, crying, mm -hmm. crying to her mom and to her dad. And where's my smiling face balloon? And I just need it. And I want it. Of course, her mom at first thought that she was, you know, somebody was hurt or something. But um, she finally, she got her calmed down. And she said, let's pray about it. So they prayed about it. And then they had to take some action. They went and looked for the balloon. They, they told uh, when the little girl's dad came home, they told him, like, we lost this balloon, we gotta look for it. So he went out and he looked for it. Um, I think it was the next day, actually, when he was headed yeah, to work, right? It was. it was not even that night. Um, but they still prayed about it and they said, okay, Jesus, you know where this balloon is, bring it back to us. With her little, you know, pure faith, um, the next day when her dad went out to work and drove down the driveway, there was that balloon stuck in a branch at the end of the driveway. It was not there the day before, but right. God brought it right to their driveway for that little girl so that he could bring that in to her, um, because of her little faith. But that took some action, took them praying about it and took them looking for it and then bringing it back in. Right. So just a cute little example of. Anything, maybe that's maybe you lost something of value to you that uh, the Holy Spirit needs to find, like Anna Lynn's wallet. Well, <laughs> yeah, right. Anna no Lynn kid. found her wallet, or somebody found Anna yeah, Lynn's wallet. Yeah, I think we talk about that. Yeah, she yes, found, lost did. her wallet, and man, but we pray, but about, we pray it. about it. Yeah. And so now here's an interesting story in Mark six. I, I thought it kind of relate, it, it does relate to this, but um, so Jesus, uh, the disciples are um, are in a boat. And this is when Jesus walks on the water. But I thought it's a very interesting, interesting statement here. It, I'll just read it. says, um, so it says, late that night, the disciples were in their, their boat. This is Mark 6. Uh, disciples were in their boat in the middle of the lake. And Jesus was alone on land. So he wasn't even there. He saw uh, from the land that they were in serious trouble, rowing hard and struggling against the wind and waves. Mm -hmm. About 3 o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. And it says he intended to go past them. Mm. Look at that. He intended to go past them. That's weird. But, that's a good but, mm -hmm. when they saw him, when they saw him walking on the water, they cried out in terror thinking it was a ghost. In other words, what, what I'm saying is 
is that almost it's like Jesus Jesus is, is walking by. The promise of Jesus is walking by and mm-hmm. he's actually waiting for someone to notice him. And so they thought he was a ghost. They still noticed him though. So mm-hmm. he's walking by. It says he intended to walk by. Mm-hmm. Um, or or he, I think he said something like, um, he, and he would have passed them by mm-hmm. if they hadn't cried they out, out. Mm-hmm. thought he was a ghost, but yet, it, it, mm-hmm. they, in other words, they made a connection. What, what, what I'll say to you is this. Picture pro- the promises of God floating past the screen right now. I wish we could do it. Yeah. All the really cool promises like, God's going to provide for you. Mm -hmm. He cares for the lilies in the field. How much more does he care for you? Um, God God wants you and your household to be saved. uh, Acts 16, 31. I believe that's what it is. He loves it that families Mm -hmm. are saved. Uh, That's a promise. Um, There's so so many promises. Hundreds and hundreds of promises. Picture those promises floating across the screen. Mm -hmm. God just wants us to grab one. Take it. Take it. Just take it right from, from there. Put it in your heart. And then watch that thing be fulfilled. But a lot of times people just see these things floating by. They don't even see them. They're floating by in life. And God's mm. saying, I'm just waiting for someone, someone right. to take it. Or mm-hmm. look at it. It says he would have passed them by. I think promises mm. float by all day long. Mm. And God just saying, but if someone grab would just a grab a hold of it, take it inside. It's for me. It's for me. <laughs> and all of a sudden that's when the miracle happened. That's when... That's when, um, yeah. didn't Peter walk on water for Oh, that? man. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times, like, I'll have a word of knowledge for somebody for healing, and five to ten people will all grab hold of that for themselves. Yes. So maybe it was intended for one person, but a whole bunch of people took it for themselves. Maybe it was, like, a, uh, a left shoulder, but somebody with a right shoulder pain said, that's mine, too. Yes. You know, I don't care that if you said happen. left. You know, I'm going to... I'm going to take it from my right shoulder. Right. So healing will happen if they just grab hold of it for themselves. It's the faith of that person and the believing it for themselves Mm -hmm. that matters. So the same thing for you. If something is coming by and God's like, this is for you. Just take it. You know, there's peace for you. If you're anxious every day, there's peace for you. And God's offering it to you all the time. Um, peace, so, yeah. peace, I leave to I you. Leave I give to you. you. Yes. Peace, peace, I give to you. Not as the world gives. Mm-hmm. This is a different kind of peace. So yeah, he's like, so those promises are there for us to to grab a hold of. Just like Abraham, yes. he had to what he had to he had to believe it, yep. obtain it, mm-hmm. and and take it in, and then see um, the promise right. mm-hmm. of uh, of Isaac. Yeah. Um, so. It, it's a, it, how about this one? How about when, when uh, they needed money to get into the temple and they said, hey, uh, you mm. know, Jesus, where's, where's the money? We, we need money to get in the temple. There was a temple tax. Mm. And uh, I think it was Peter, it was a Peter that said, hey, we don't have any. Mm-hmm. And then Jesus, go, Jesus said, well, go, go fishing. First fish you're going to find, you're, you're gonna, he's going to have a coin in his mouth. Mm-hmm. Now, the, the significance of that is why didn't Jesus just, you know, tell him to go two feet and find it under a rock? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I guess he could have. That would be something similar. But he said, "Listen, right. I'm going to test your faith, Peter. You're going to, I'm going to have you put you on a journey right now. That's just going to mm-hmm. keep, just going to leave you mesmerized because mm-hmm. it's going to show you how awesome I am and how much I, how great and mighty I am." That's what Jesus is saying. Mm-hmm. So he sends him on that journey, goes fishing, and lo and behold, he finds a coin in, in the first fish, the that he first catches. fish that he catch his mouth in order to <laughs> show him. Um, but but he had to go do something. He had to, right. go. He had to go. Peter could have said, "You're nuts! Like, mm-hmm. who is this guy? Why mm-hmm. would I do that?" Mm-hmm. You know. But he was. It was a test. But he said, "You know what? Just yeah. it, it was really a picture of going and getting what Jesus mm-hmm. has promised. He promised yeah. that coin in the fish's mouth, right? Or say the uh, the healing of Naaman. He had leprosy. Yes. Elisha told him go uh, dip in the Jordan River seven times, and at first Naaman was like, Psh, "No way." You know, why are you making me do that? Right. Um, and Elisha's, uh, or no, Naaman's uh, servant was like very wise about it. And if he asked you to do a hard thing to get your healing, you would do it, right? Yeah. You're desperate for healing. True. You might as well just try it, you know? So he had to go and take action and dip in, in the river uh, seven times. And then he did obtain his healing. So I wonder. So obedience to God. It really matters. So you do take action for healing. Right. We have a really good story about that. Well, about a guy. Yeah. 
What? Go ahead and say that first. Well, I was going to say, you, you said it, you said a <laughs> key word is desperate or wanted. I yes. believe people think about it, yes. but they never really do it because they maybe they just don't want it. And again, I, mm. I love America. I How do. How bad I, do you want it? I do love America. We have so, we have so much here, but I think yeah. sometimes it can get in the way of... We've got so much that we really don't, yep. we're really truly hungering and thirsting for, for righteousness. Yep. Um, righteousness meaning that, that right relationship with Jesus, mm. that, that wanting him more than anything else in our lives. Mm. Like when you, when, or, or, or wanting what you know he has for you too. Like, yeah. like when you know that God wants you mm -hmm. to be made whole, he doesn't want you struggling with oppression and depression. When you know right. that, you go get it. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I was struggling with anxiety um, and physical and emotional issues stemming from that, uh, I had to take some action. I had to get out this big book of the Word of God, and I read scriptures about fear and anxiety and peace. A lot. Over and over, and over. over every single day until I felt like, okay, I'm being healed. I'm being right. healed. It literally was like medicine. I had to... I was reading these scriptures, the same scriptures, but they were in like 10 different translations of the Bible, right. 10 different versions of the Bible. Right. And I would read them over and over in all the different versions of the Bible over and over every day. And then I obtained my healing, but it took some work. It took some effort yeah. and it took some action by faith on my part. Cause I was like, I know the word will heal me. I just got to get it you, in me. You, you know, you do. And you know, it says without faith, it is impossible to please God. But yes. those who come to him, mm -hmm. comma, mm -hmm. must believe that he is, or must yes. believe that he is. And, and that he's a rewarder of those who dil yeah, who, diligently, who, who, of seek, diligently him. seek him. That word diligent is painstaking effort. So again, it, it's just a, such a persistence and such a believing that the vision that God gave you, the picture he gave you mm -hmm. is so real in your heart. Yeah. It burns in your heart that nothing's going to stop you mm -hmm. from getting to where God wants you to get. Yeah. Go. Because it's going to help people. Yes. It's going to help people. It's going to bless people. It's going to open up another door for you yes. to let you into people's lives to, to help them and, and uh, reach, uh, help them reach Jesus. Right. Right. So right now, I want you to whatever promise you've been believing for for the last few weeks while we've been walking you through this, um, I want you to think or ask God what is one step of action that you can take mm -hmm. towards obtaining and taking that promise for yourself. Um, if it is healing, you've got to go get some prayer Pray. for that healing yeah. and then start to do what you couldn't do. Like if it was your back, then you got to bend or do something that you couldn't do before. Um, if it was a relationship, text that person, make tell a phone I'm call, sorry. tell them you're sorry. I'm sorry. Tell them you're sorry. Tell them Dan's sorry. <laughs> <laughs> tell, People blame me a lot for a lot of stuff. Especially if they don't know him. They tell him he's sorry. <laughs> but sorry, I'm used to it. Okay. <laughs> tell them you're sorry. Uh, write the letter. Uh, reach out over text or phone call or something. If it's a book, write a page. Just one page. You yeah. know? Yeah. Say, I'm going to write another page right. tomorrow. You know? Yes. But do it today. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, so you got to do it now. You got to do it. Uh, take quick action. Yeah. Okay. So the guy that I was telling you about, or I was going to tell you about, about the healing, he, the action that he took was to go get prayer and his, his back was hurting him. We went to Bethel church to visit and they told this testimony and they said, this man who's part of our church, he was instantly healed during prayer <laughs> on a Sunday prayer. He was instantaneously healed completely. Miraculously, his back was healed. And they said, but let me tell you the backstory. Instant healing is usually not actually instant healing because he had to persevere for yeah. 12 years. 12 years. He every... never gave up. Right. 12 years. Every single Sunday, he went up for prayer. And he didn't give up and he didn't stop believing that healing was his. And the, in the 12th year, on a Sunday morning prayer, like always, he was he completely healed. healed. Yeah. So. Do not give up. Just take action by faith. Keep taking action. And keep taking action. Yep. Persevere and don't give up because remember the Bible says, what you sow, you will reap. Yes. And you will receive a harvest of blessing if you don't give up. Right. So don't so, give up. Pray, yeah. picture, persevere, possess. Three P's. Yes. Three P's. Four P's. <laughs> really four, but yeah. Four, oh we, my goodness. we put the two, the two together, the pray and picture. 
is pray, really one. Yeah, but pray right. and get a picture. But four P's, but yeah. Four one, P's, three. One A, one points. B. Four P's, three P points. We love you guys. Okay. Anyway, have a great day. Um, oh. No, I want you to when you tell what when you decide what action you're going to take. We, I want to know in the comments. So okay. even though we're going to finish right now and we're going to post this video, I want you guys to um, comment so that we can kind of keep you accountable and we can watch. But if it's an action or a small action at least that you can take today, do it yeah. now. Do it today. Okay, we love you guys yeah. and we'll have, have, a, a great have an amazing weekend and we will see you again on Monday. Okay, like and share this video too. Thanks.